Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this fourth lesson in Week 18. In this lesson, we carry on talking about acids and bases. In this lesson, we're going to look at specifically neutralization, which is when we add an acid and a base to find a neutral point. Let's join Bruce again as he teaches us about neutralization. We're still under acid-base reactions, and I want to talk about what happens when an acid and a base, a, a, a acid as in a, a, as in a, for example, hydrochloric acid and a base in terms of a hydroxide are able to react together. And we introduce a reaction which is known as neutralization. So when an acidic substance and a basic substance act or react together, we have a neutralization reaction. Now, what do we mean by a neutralization reaction? Well, a neutralization reaction is a reaction that will remove both the acidic and basic characteristics of those substances. So in other words, it destroys the acid and it destroys the base. What do we get out of it? Well, we produce a substance known as a salt. Okay, now we've got to be quite careful with this word salt because we use the word salt fairly generally and fairly sort of um, easily when we sprinkle our salt onto, the, onto our food, when we have supper and things like that. But guys, what is salt? Well, everyone knows that salt is sodium chloride, okay? And we can make sodium chloride by reacting the acid, hydrochloric acid, and the base, sodium hydroxide, and we will form sodium chloride, and we also get another residue, which is simply water being given off. NaCl, sodium chloride, is an example of a salt, okay? Because what is a salt? A salt is a general name given to all products formed from an acid-base reaction. So it's just by coincidence that hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide produces sodium chloride, and that is what we define as table salt. Okay, but we must have a look at other reactions because if we look at other examples over here, Sulfuric acid plus potassium hydroxide is going to produce potassium sulfate plus water. Okay? Um, yes, and I put the balancing in there, so yeah, we do need a two over there to balance it out. Now, what is potassium sulfate? Well, that's also a salt, guys. Okay. It's also a salt. Why? Because it's a product of an acid-base reaction. Now, do we sprinkle potassium sulfate onto our food? Absolutely no ways. So guys, please, we must get away from thinking that when we talk about salt, we're talking about the stuff we um, sprinkle on our food. A salt is simply the, the general name or general term that we give to the product of an acid-base reaction. Another example I've got over here, what about nitric acid plus ammonium hydroxide? Well, that will produce ammonium nitrate also, plus H2O, okay? And that is balanced as it stands. There, guys, is another example of a salt. Ammonium nitrate is a salt. It's a product of an acid. There, the NO3 part from the acid and the NH4 part from the base. And there it is, the base residue and the... Oopsie, that moved around a little bit. Uh, let's just go back there. Easiest mm. thing to do. Okay. That uh, doesn't want to do it. doesn't matter. We almost finished this. But we've got this, our production, this, our salt over there. Okay. And what we have got right at the end, just to conclude this lesson, is to chat about our general formula, or general equation, to rather say. Acid plus base will always, always give us a salt plus water. So if you're studying a reaction between an acidic molecule and a basic molecule, okay, or should I say acidic compound and a basic compound, you will know that you will always get a salt and water as a product. Bruce has shown us that when an acid reacts with a base, which is a hydroxide, the products are salt and water. What will be the products if the acid reacts with a base, which is a carbonate, like calcium carbonate? Let us look at this example. 
a dilute hydrochloric acid reacts with calcium carbonate in a solid form. The reaction yields carbon dioxide, calcium chloride, and water. We can see in this example that when an acid reacts with a base, which is a carbonate, the products will be carbon dioxide, salt, and water. So let's summarize the reactions that we learned about in this lesson. First of all, acid and a base gives you a salt plus water, and an acid plus a carbon gives you salt, carbon dioxide, and water. And you may wonder why is it important for you to learn this? And the reason is that I might tell you, or somebody might tell you in the exams, that you have, for example, um, I don't know, hydrochloric acid, and it reacts with sodium hydroxide. Now, it might be difficult for you to try and work out, okay, that's a pretty easy one, but still, might be difficult for you to work out what the salt is, what the salt is. So if you know that an acid and a base form salt and a water, then you can say, okay, fine, we know that this forms water, so we've got form something plus H O. So if I look at that, I go, well, that means that I've used that oxygen, I've used that hydrogen, and I've used that hydrogen. And what am I left with? I'm only left with NaCl. And then obviously you need to work out the valencies, but since hydrogen is plus one and hydroxyl is minus one, this just becomes NaCl. Cl. And in this case, NaCl happens to be table salt. But please remember the definition of this salt is basically an ionic solution, an ionic solution that is soluble in water. Okay, that is really what it's salt is. It's something that when it dissolves in water forms an ionic solution. Okay, now let's look at an acid and a carbonate. And again, if you know that an acid and a carbonate forms a salt, carbon dioxide, and water, then if any of you can't know offhand what the salt is, you can work it out. So let's try, let's give us, I don't know, hydrochloric acid again, but this time we're going to form it with calcium carbonate calcium carbonate so what do we know we know it forms water h2o plus carbon dioxide co2 plus something okay let's do some crossing out we know it forms water so we've got a hydrogen there and it forms carbon dioxide so what is left do you agree we've got a calcium and a chloride over there but this is a Cl minus and the calcium is Ca2 plus. How do you know that? Well, either you can look at your periodic table and see that chlorine is in group seven and therefore it is a minus one valency and calcium is in group two and therefore it's two plus. Or you can look at the fact that this is joined to hydrogen. If a hydrogen is plus one, then chlorine is minus one. And you guys should know that carbonate is CO3 2 minus, and therefore calcium is going to be 2 plus. And how do you join this? Remember, what do you do? You actually just swap the indices, so it becomes Cl2 Ca, except it's the other way around. So it becomes Ca Cl2, calcium chloride. So that's Ca. Seal two, And now what do we have to do? The final thing we have to do is we need to balance this. Okay, so if we look at this, we see there's one hydrogen here and two hydrogens on the right hand side. So we put a two in front of this. Okay, and then let's have a look. How many chlorines do we have? We now have two chlorines on the left and two chlorines on the right. We have one calcium on the left and that's one calcium on the right. We've got one carbon on the left and we've got one carbon on the right. And there's three oxygens here, and that's one, two, and three oxygens there, so it is balanced. So that is a lot easier to do if you know that it's forming carbon dioxide and water. So please, grade 12s, learn the definitions here. Well, not definitions, but these formula that acid in a place gives you salt and water, and acid and carbon gives you salt, carbon dioxide, and water. Learn them, because it will help you in the exams and tests. And that's it for this lesson in grade 12. So please go study this and then go do the assessments in the turn able system. Have a great day.